Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be creating a interlaced text effect inside of DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. Now, this video is inspired by one of my older tutorials. It was done on GIMP, which is an image manipulation app. So I used uh, that tool to create this interlaced text effect, which was quite popular back then. In this video, we are going to look at creating it and also animating it inside of the Fusion page. The first thing we'll do is I'm going to start off by creating our background. Let's click on this very first icon and this will just uh, create a background for you. And this should also add in a media out if this was your blank fusion composition without any timeline or anything at all. So just disconnect this and let's take a look at this background node. Let me just switch to the single view mode. And now let's just change the color real quick. So let's just pick any color. I think this will look fine uh, the next thing is we will just start typing our text so let's just add in a text plus to this they should automatically add in a merge one as well let's take a look at this merge one and in the text one over here click on it and you should see the text over here on the right side in the inspector over here and just start typing anything that you want and we'll just increase the size like that and we can just maybe change the font style and let's make it extra bold for now and maybe we can just reduce the tracking a little bit something like that and now what you can do is you can put more text on top um, for example you can add in a text like so and let's just view this you can just type in your second one let me just type in laced and you can just use a different font for this we're not going to use this font. We're going to use this to trace the font, right? We're going to use a polygon mask tool and create the same script using the polygon mask over here, which is this icon. So let's just drag that in. And what you can do is you can start tracing around this text. So you can start clicking and this will just add points and you can click and hold and create a curve like this. And if you go to the previous point, you can change the handles as well. So let me just undo this. So something, you can click on this and just change the curve. And then you can select the second point and start continuing on from that point by clicking on this icon that says um, click a pen. So then you can start continuing from that point. All right, so you can start tracing the shape. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, it will take a lot of time. So yeah, don't rush, just take your time and trace out this word that you want to use completely. And once you are done, then you can move to the next step. So what I'm going to do is instead of tracing um, all this, uh, all the letters over here, I'm going to just create a simple shape just to save some time over here. So the shape that I'm going to create is just a simple squiggly line like this. So maybe I'll just create a shape like this. And I'm going to select all the, all of these points and you can do that by clicking on this icon, select all points and you can hit shift S on the keyboard or you can click on this icon that should be yeah, this one, uh, smooth shift S click on it and it'll make it smooth. And then you can move all of these points around like so. Let me just try and put this in the center and then you can click away. And then let's select this polygon again and you can select this point individually like so and make changes to this. You can change the curve over here and over here as well. So you can modify it. Right. So let's say we have this text traced out and we want to use it on on our text over here on top of it. So to do this, uh, we have to use the paint tool over here. So if you drag the paint tool, um, this is the paint tool. If you view this, it will be empty because it needs an input, which uh, will be a background node. So let's just drag in a background and connect this background to the paint. And now you will see the paint over here. If I click on it and view it, you should see this tiny um, circle as well, which is basically your multi stroke brush selected. Great. So what we're going to do is go to this background tool and we will move this alpha slider to zero and then in the paint what we are going to do is we're going to connect the paint to this polygon that we just created 
Um, so we we can delete this text. We don't want that for now. So we're going to con connect this paint to this polygon. And the way we do that is by going into in the paint and we should see uh, it, it's not visible in the multi -line, multi stroke um, option over here. We have to switch to polyline stroke. So if you click on that, uh, you should see up in the modifiers over here, even in the tool section, it's visible over here. I click here for shape animation, but I just like to do things in the modifiers. So just you can right click on this text that says right click here for shape animation. Then you can go to connect to. We have this polygon over here and click on polygon. And you should see the shape over there that we used in this polygon over here, which is great, right? And now in the brush controls, you can change the size and you can change the softness and all that stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to create our own brush or we're going to create our own shape. And we're going to do this by dragging in another background. And we can go to the image size over here and let's just make this. We don't want that to be too big. So let's make this 100 by 100. And if you take a look at this background now, this is going to be in 100 by 100 size and then we will just go to color over here and change the type to gradient i don't want the shape to be square so what we can do is we can add an ellipse mask over here and connect it to this background so that we have this circle shape and then we can just increase the size make sure it fits perfectly like that and then in the background you can of course change the colors and all that stuff right over here so let me just pick different colors real quick and on the right we would like it to be something else be this yeah that looks cool so go ahead and click on ok and you can in between add as many colors as you want so for example if you don't want pink you can change it to something more intense and yeah that should look good click on ok and of course you can also pair with the offset as well change it how it looks if you set it to ping pong it will repeat this texture and you can also set this repeat which will just give you some different results so i like to set this to once reset the offset and also switch to the set the interpolation space to this last option which is lab uh, i think it just gives nice um, uh, you know the colors blend nicely when you select this option so I'm going to use lab over here and you can like kind of squeeze the colors and you know try and move them around uh, so yeah once you're happy with this and of course you can be any shape you, if you want to use ellipse you can use uh, maybe some of these other shapes we have over here in the shape system uh, s star i guess um, of course you can use a square any other shape that you want a custom shape that's completely possible as well but ellipse is uh, what i'm going to use so once you have this um, shape over here and then in the paint what we have to do is we want to uh, change the brush so on the brush controls we'll change the brush shape and we're going to choose this third option which is image click on that and by default it selects a brush which is set to ball metal and if you view this paint over here you can actually see this so if i just zoom out we have this ball metal if i increase the size you can see this ball metal you, you can change the shape to different shapes over here such as bomb and can increase the spacing as well you can see how that looks uh, but what we are interested is in this first option which is called tool and now we can drag this background three into this source tool drag and drop it now you should see your brush pattern over there it looks cool right um, so now what we can do is we can reduce the spacing set that to zero but that looks kind of weird, right? And to fix this, here's the magic trick. You just have to simply click on this merge icon and look at that. We have this 3D looking gradient, which looks really, really good. If you make changes into this, in this background, let me just split this view so you guys can see clearly. If you make changes, these changes will be updated in your brush over there as well. So yeah, go ahead and be, get crazy with this, create your own uh, style into this. You can add many effects to this. For example, I can add something like, I don't know, even 
if we have this emboss tool, I guess. Right, so if I just drag that in, it should look something like this. And maybe change some settings over here. Maybe increase the power and angle, I guess. Uh, we want to change this uh, or we want to update this in the in the paint as well. So click on paint and now we want to change the source tool. So let's drag this emboss into this background. And you should see the changes in the main animation or in the main on the left side as well. Let's just delete this. We don't want to use this. And let's just stick to our background. Let's just drag that in. And now we want to merge these two things together, right? So let's connect this merge one with this paint. Like so. And take a look at it. This is how it's going to look. I'm just going to switch to the single view mode. And we want to see this paint in front. So just right click on the merge and click on swap inputs. There's also a shortcut key, control D, click on that. And you should see it in front. And at any time, uh, you can just go to the paint and change the position of uh, the gradients or, or the points over here. You can just change it and put it anywhere that you want. All right, so now we want to create that interlaced text effect, right? Uh, the way we do this is by masking out the paint. And how do we do that? We can use a mask paint tool. So just search for mask paint, click on add and connect it to this paint. All right, so it will disappear. What we have to do is in the mask paint, go to mask and click on invert. You should get it back. And then just to see what we're doing, we'll just go to the merge tool over here and go to settings and reduce the blend amount so that we can see the text behind it. And then in the mask paint, we will... They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. All right, so DaVinci Resolve crashed, but luckily it saved the project. We don't have to do anything from scratch. So in the mask paint, what we're gonna do is we're gonna also make sure that we are using the stroke option over here because right now, if I use uh, the multi stroke and you can see that I'm at frame zero over here, which is the very first frame. And if I draw something, right, if I move to any other frame, this stroke will not be visible. It's only visible for that frame that we draw it on. So we are not going to use this. Um, let's just undo this. What we're going to use is the stroke option over here, this fourth icon. So now if I draw something and it it will just stay um, there for the entire length of your animation. So let me just undo this and uh, let's just view this merge too. Now in the mask paint, um, make sure you set this to invert to see this line over here. And then in the merge, we will just reduce the blend so that we can see the text behind it. And we can tell what we are masking. And let's just zoom in. And in the controls, we will We'll change the brush controls and set this to square because our text has this uh, the sharp has these sharp uh, corners so this will the square brush will help us removing it um, easily and if you by accident if you just um, erase too much of it then you don't have to actually hit control z what you can do is you can go to controls over here set the alpha to zero this will change the color to black and then you can start painting the area that you want. So something like that. And then it just you have to switch back and forth to white and black color and start removing um, the text from on the top of it. To repeat this process, for example, on the next letter, I want it to kind of overlap or be on top of the text. But on the third letter, I want it to go under the text again, something like this. I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial and then again it will go on top and then over here it will go under the text right so you can start removing it from here and once you are happy you can just go to the merge tool over here and increase the blend back to one and what you can do next is in the paint over here i hope it doesn't crash again so it, i'm gonna hit save in the paint uh, you should go under polyline stroke one, make sure it's polyline stroke, not any other stroke. If there is another, any other stroke, just delete that because this is the one that we used earlier. And we have this write on property. Let's go to the very first frame, which is frame zero. 
and we're going to create a keyframe mode there set the right on to zero and then maybe go to frame 130 and set it back to one so you will have an animation like this right so yeah there you have it that's how easy it is to uh, create this interlaced text effect inside of davinci resolve in the fusion page i hope this was helpful i have been recording this video for like an hour or so because it crashed a lot and i have to repeat this process but yeah this was just a quick video on how to do this definitely take your time trace out the text cleanly use the paint mask more efficiently i'm pretty sure you can do a better job than what i did over here um so yeah that is pretty much it i hope uh, you like this video i hope it will help you in your upcoming projects Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.